Hi, I'm Grant Asplund. And I'm Matt Lawrence. And we're here today having a conversation talking about, well, something you've probably heard of, I imagine. Hope so. AI, artificial intelligence. It seems to be the topic on everybody's mind right now, huh, Matt? Absolutely, especially students, right? Yeah, exactly, because they're looking at how can they pass that test easier with no homework. Right, so you know, Chad GPT, the user rate fell significantly during the summer. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's so. <laughs> interesting. Their <laughs> assumption is the, 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 right? the students, yeah. Less homework needed to be done. Yeah, unbelievable. So I'll tell you, you know, to kick this off, I watched a video on YouTube. I encourage everyone, look this video up. It's called The AI Dilemma. Yeah. And it was put on by the Center for Humane Technology. And I got to tell you, man, hour and seven minutes long, um, really learned a lot about AI and frankly got a little concerned and can really appreciate more uh, the dichotomy that seems to be out in the world right now where you've got one side that sees AI as this panacea man that's just going to save the world and then you've got the other side that sees it as a doomsday it's going to ruin all of humanity. Um, I, I really do think it's interesting but Maybe we can talk a little bit, Matt, about what happened and why AI has all of a sudden become such a big thing uh, uh, today compared to, I mean, heck, it's been around, what, you, I think Early you, Or late 60s. Yeah. It's been around, had funding, lost funding, gained funding again, gained traction. And um, I, I mean, I have an opinion that uh, artificial intelligence has been around and definitely in use. I mean, Checkpoint Software has been using it for you know, more than a decade. Yeah. Um, but if I asked any of the, the professionals using Checkpoint, hey, do you guys use artificial intelligence? Their response would typically be no. Yeah, you're talking about um, like customers. And yeah, stuff, right? customers, yeah. general, uh, most people would be like, if I asked them what's AI, their response would be either what Hollywood has portrayed it to be, you know, Terminator, Terminator. or something yeah. like that, which yeah. is scary. Yeah. Um, but then came along ChatGPT. And all of a sudden, we had an application that we can interact with and yeah. define that as artificial intelligence. Yeah. As soon as that happened, everybody jumped on board. Yeah. And not only did they see, hey, it can make my life easier, it can take shortcuts, always easy thing or fun thing to do, yeah. but they can, it's tangible. Yeah. And as soon as that happened, everybody started to ask, well, how are we using this for cybersecurity? Well, we've been doing that. Right. Um, how are we using this to improve our lives or improve our organizations? So I think. Um, that's really what gave it a lot more hype, yeah. uh, a lot more, mo I want to say, momentum and probably funding, which means we're going to see a lot more of this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll reference back to the video, uh, the AI dilemma. One of the things they talked about was, you know, as you mentioned, machine learning has been around for a long, long time. Correct. But it's been largely isolated uh, amongst the very large academia where they have a huge amount of money. Yes. And, even still today, I think you can see the companies that really are exploiting AI for the marketplace are also the very large companies, yeah. the Apples, the Metas, uh, the Googles. But what was interesting is how they described the change from uh, up until about 2017, we were to work on machine learning. Yes. So if you were working on uh, uh, photo recognition or, or something. Specific image to be more precise, yeah, yeah or one object. You're twiddling bits for that specific machine exactly. learning. And then in, in 2017, I believe it was, there was this shift to language. Everything became language. Correct. That's why we call them large language models, right? Yes. And, and as soon as that happened, your work and my work were Previously, were totally disparate and, and in two separate silos. Now it's in the same bucket. And so we're seeing this exponential, exponential acceleration. That happened in 2017. And over the course of the last few years, it's been silently gaining the momentum. And now you see things like ChatGPT. But I showed you just a little bit ago, and I want to talk about this. So ChatGPT, everybody knows about. In fact, the fastest growing application ever. Yes. In, in fact, I think it was Facebook took four years to get to 100 million users. Uh, uh, Insta 
took uh, two and a half years to get to 100 million, and it took, I, if I remember right, three months or two months or something. It was months, yes. To, to get to 100 million users. So very, very widespread and uh, pervasive and being used, but we got guardrails. Right, and and, right. and and it's it's ethical, and they put all these controls. Well, I just I posted this on LinkedIn a couple of days ago. This is somewhat disturbing. Worm uh, GPT, no uh, ethical boundaries, no guardrails. In fact, it's been trained and improved on being better at writing phishing, uh, building malware. Correct. So historically. Um, tools or kits to build malware has been um, costly, not necessarily accessible by every person, right. which meant that phishing emails or attacks was general and I don't say low quality, but it was a shotgun approach. Yep. Um, AI makes it a little bit more accessible to make it much more targeted. Right. And that's what's scary. I've always, uh, working in cybersecurity, my biggest concern has always been a targeted attack, yeah. where you social engineering, um, where you really go after a specific individual. Now, AI, uh, specifically generative AI, makes it possible to copy your voice, right. put an image on, um, and essentially convince an employee to transfer $500 million before it's the weekend. Yeah. So We've already seen that happen. We've seen that happen. It's happened a couple of times, in fact, I know it requires three seconds of my voice. Sorry, I hit the mic. Three seconds of my voice. Yes. And you can make me say anything with emotion, right? Yes. So, so you can, uh, now, it's not perfect yet, but it's only it's gonna improve. Good enough to convince a person who needs to press a button. Yeah. And that's the scary part. It, it, it is um, concerning. So here's, to kind of bring it back to practicality, because it seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, um, we're hearing about it like a massive hype cycle in AI. Yes. But when we get down to where the rubber meets the road, I don't know how many security professionals are uh, pondering and building out uh, artificial intelligence tools for their cyber they're implementation. Not. I mean, it's, it's, they're, that's not their so, concern. So how much do I see artificial intelligence really um, I would say focused or cybersecurity engineers working on it, not a lot. Yeah. And the fact is, the most important thing for them today is uh, uptime, unfortunately. And the second thing is we don't want to have something bad get in. Um, and that takes a lot of time. Quite frankly, today, engineering teams are understaffed. So outside of the ones who focus on AI and cybersecurity from a hobby perspective, right. it's not happening. Yeah. Um, I would say CIO, CISOs, definitely are very aware of it. They're concerned about it, but they don't have the, the uh, inclination to typically focus on it, or more important, the resources. Yeah. Where do they start? Yeah. Um, bigger organizations, or for example, Checkpoint Software, um, we have a dedicated team that's hired and trained, and they work on building in engines and hopefully to supplement that lack with, within most companies. Yep. But yeah, there's no time to really do that. It's, um, it's like if we go back 20 years, network engineers were put into a position and like, all right, you need to manage uh, the, the firewall yep. and put in a few rules of where things need to go and not go, and they, just, they became the security professionals. Yep. They don't have the training, they don't necessarily understand, but that was a fairly easy task, right? Boy, it's uh, exactly how it is today, but it's only, it's, it's, it's accelerating, right? Because that same phenomenon, think of, uh, hey, Matt, check this out, man. It's called uh, EC2, it's elastic computing, right? Yep. And, and oh, cool, you should show that to your boss. Next thing you know, you're the cloud guy. Exactly. And, and, but. The, the changes in the acceleration that we saw happen in those five years, just like in the last five years. Yes. And, and it's only faster now. And I think that's right. what's, what's creating more of a challenge because this accelerated move to the cloud, I'm getting caught with my pants down because I don't have the technical resources for cloud native. Yes. Now along comes this new generative AI thing and I don't even have the resources to keep my uh, environment safe, secure, and up-to-date and patched. 
uh, let alone resources to go and, and uh, learn about AI. New technology, yeah. Don't have the resources to hire a new individual to start implementing that. So, yeah, you're, you're definitely um, challenged. And if we include the macroeconomics today. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of jumping ahead, I guess, as I'm thinking. Uh, I know, you know, it's, it's sort of like you're probably not going to be doing a lot, but you should be looking at who you're partnering with and how they're using AI Correct. and 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 the investments that they're making, I guess. What would you recommend to your customers today so, uh, with AI? That's a really difficult question because it's obviously a little case by case, but my, my um, advice would be to be aware of it. It's going to be very prevalent. It is up and coming. Sure, it's been there for a while, but... Um, in order to fend off AI-focused attacks that becomes very specific, you need to take a preventative approach yep. and you need to partner with a technology company that has both that approach but also an understanding or an implementation of AI. Yep. Um, now, the burden on you then needs to understand how to actually interview or, or figure out which company really progressively uses AI because let's just be candid, there's a big hype. Every company I talk to use AI, and in some cases, quite, you know, it's it's a bit of a stretch to call it AI. Yep. But if they don't use that as a marketing approach, then it's uh, it's they're going to they get left, left out. Over, they right? get left out. You so, betcha. Um, I would ask more specific questions. Tell me which AI engines are you using? Um, can you tell me how many te or team members or teams uh, do you actually have to train? Let's say machine learning models. Um, when machine learning was prevalent and talked about. A lot of companies would say, oh, we use it. My so, next question is, how many people do you have to train the model? I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking now, I'm a checkpoint representative. Yes. And I go and I see a customer. Yes. And the customer says to me, uh, hey, Grant, uh, what are you guys doing with AI? And I mean, uh, what would you recommend I do? I mean, h how would you recommend our field respond to customers? Of course, I, I totally agree with you. You know, it's 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 the horizontal vertical, right? I mean, it's everybody wants to do it, but everybody is going to want to do it their right. way. Of but course. what advice would you have for the field reps, the local reps, the local SEs when they get into a conversation about AI? I would uh, I would first say you need to, um, if you work in a technology organization, that relies on AI, and it is, quite frankly, a differentiator. You need to become a little bit more familiar and comfortable with talking about it. That's just, you know, be candid. Yeah. Um, the second part is um, basic things, basic facts, that we have more than 40 engines, AI engines, just in our, we've, you know, branded it Threat AI yeah. uh, for a very good reason. But you can look at uh, facts of how much we've improved our, um, let's say, false positives, capture rate. Um, yep. There's a lot of uh, facts that you can go and rehearse that you can communicate to, to yep. uh, whoever you're talking with in order to, uh, well, uh, reinforce that, uh, that message. Yep. But if you're not comfortable, obviously that's going to be a problem. Yep. And it is, I, I want to say, going to be the center of conversations um, if it isn't already. Yeah. You know, one example I can tell you, I know uh, from my past presentations and learning about threat cloud AI and some of the engines is just the, uh, the ability to scour through and look at enormous numbers of domains yes. so much faster than a human being could look up each domain and check its registration date and do the who is, right? And so it's, it sounds like a very obvious but simple example, but huge impact on our ability to start to identify domains that were, you know, massive number of domains that were all registered at the same time with just one character difference, yes. all intended to be used for some botnet or some malicious but, use. So that is the obvious benefit, of, one of the obvious benefits of data, oh, sorry, of AI is, mm -hmm. um, how do you process massive amounts of data and to produce an outcome. So Checkpoint was actually one of the leading cybersecurity organizations to start with that from a, a log investigation. Um, you know, we had Smart Event that was basically a correlation engine. So yep. we would look at thousands, hundreds of thousands of logs 
to come to a conclusion and give you a, hey, here is what you need to pay attention to, as opposed to the industry norm was alert fatigue. Right. A ton of those. Right. So uh, that was, you know, and I know that we still have that product. It was a lot more prevalent. I want to say now we have uh, AI engines that to some extent supersede XDR and et cetera, doing a right. similar thing. But um, that still remains a problem for companies. They have 15, 20 vendors. Each of those have their own things. They try and put it in a sim, try and have a team trained well enough to filter through those and eliminate false positives. And it's, it's a daunting task. Um, using artificial intelligence, consolidation, um, relying on a vendor or a partner to do the heavy lifting there for you. And obviously they need to have the competence to relying yep. on AI. Uh, that's, that's really unfortunately the only way to go forward here in my opinion. So let me ask you this. Yes. Where do you fall? Because, you know, you could bifurcate the camps into one of two. It's going to change its utopia. It's going to enable everyone to <laughs> put their feet on the couch and uh, make millions of dollars and have of uh, the machine doing all the work. Or we're doomed. Humanity is, is, is over and, uh, you know, Skynet. We're, so, we're going to be gone. I, I, that's an awesome question, and that's going to be a very revealing, but... I'll come find I, you in 40 years. <laughs> yes. So, I love Terminator movies. I like, you know, I would say the doom and gloom component and fight and everything, but my honest opinion is it's going to depend on uh, the person. So let's use a real-life example to answer a cool question and make it less cool. A company today, um, let's just say manufacturing, they're going to use AI to reduce workforce and actually supplement, let's say, just 25% of jobs today and leverage AI to remain as productive as they've been. In that example, the next question is going to be, am I part of the 25% or am I part of the, um, let's say, the 75% or potentially the board who now have a more productive um, organization, probably more profitable? Um, and I think it, your response is going to depend heavily on it. My answer would be, I would like to reinvent myself and change current or stay current with technology, learn, adapt, as when cloud was, the, I want to say, the hype, make sure that I'm competent with that technology. And if yeah. that's the case, then my value goes up and I love it. Boy, and I, you know, I, I, I'll tell you, as a guy who helped open an Apple dealership in 1983, Oh, you're dating uh, you know, yourself. I know it, I know it. <laughs> Six months before the Mac, what I find so extraordinary is the, the compression, the acceleration yes. w uh, of the change, right? Yes. The amount of change we saw in the, in, in the first, say, 10 or 20 years versus the ensuing 10 years versus the subsequent 10 years to that, right? I mean the amount of change that's happened just in cloud, right? Correct. From when uh, I came back to Checkpoint through Dome 9 acquisition. I mean, it's amazing. And now it's only getting faster. Uh, uh, but we're certainly in a huge hype cycle with this AI. Uh, but I definitely think your recommendation that we all would be well served staying abreast and informed on this new technology and understand how we are leveraging it to really differentiate ourselves in the marketplace and Absolutely. keep learning, right? It's an Stay opportunity. Curious. It's, not, it's not a scary thing. It's an opportunity. Yep. You can absolutely improve, change, uh, increase your value, your career path. Um, and I mean, I read that there was about 800,000 jobs open for AI uh, technologists, not wow. just engineers, not just coders, um, but that's a ton of opportunity. Yep. There's a need that needs to be filled. So you either align yourself with that or you get passed by. Yeah, it's a great opportunity though, for yes, sure. It's great talking with you, Matt. I always you enjoy too. it, man. Thank you. Thank you very much, Grant.